Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another land vehicle. This thing is highly detailed and very useful in survival mode, and it's called the VME Alpha, which is this lovely thing sitting right behind me. So this is a very well equipped vehicle, featuring a survival kit, O2 H2 generator, an auto cannon turret, we've got spoil lights galore, and we even have a connection system to be able to tow stuff around via a hinge. Pressing over 10, find this in the spawn menu, the VME is... 313 small blocks using the Heavy Industry, Warfare 2, Sparks of the Future and Wasteland DLC packs. We see its name up here, so hopefully I'm saying that correctly. But we do have one hell of a lot of information about it. Then of course all the way down here we do have its specifications and what it can do. So giving this thing a thumbs up, what we're going to do is have a look around the outside, have a look at the controls, then after we're going to drive it around, then we're going to go visit the space pirates who are sitting in the distance right there and see how it handles. And yes, of course, there will be a link to the skybox I'm currently using. It's just a giant cloud plane on the top and the bottom, and it makes for very nice screenshots when on the planet. So back over to here, my character can bow off just a little bit. There we go. This is what we get in the front of the VME. So front and center, what we can see is one part of a hinge for us to be able to connect up to a base, connect up to a trailer, and drag it around or recharge this thing. We've got some fantastic use of the neon tubes and to get some lights at the front of the vehicle, and we do have two spot lights right behind some beam blocks to actually light up the darkness. Moving up just a little bit, we've got a few more spot lights just to help out in case it is very dark, and there is a camera which can be extremely useful for driving this thing around. While we're sitting in the cockpit, we cannot see over the little lip, so we are going to be protected from shots coming towards us, because it's going to be bloody difficult to see where we're going without it. We have to come back around and come onto the side. We've got some lovely wing mirrors that are made out of some armoured panels. Coming all the way around over to this section, this is how we're going to get in, so we do have a little step up, get up, and inside, there's our turret on the side, there's the side of our spotlights. Over here we can just about make out our O2H2 generator. There's our parachute in case we get into a bit of a pickle while going over a mountainside. And over on this section, we've got some neon tubes acting as a handle, and then it's a little seat for a passenger to sit on. We also have a spare wheel just in case we need it, so we can say just remove that, grind that up, and replace it. Then around towards the very back, we can see the back of our survival kit. Here's a bunch of industrial spotlights, and there is a button to detach and attach that hinge, like the one at the front. We also have a camera to help reverse this thing up, help dock it up, and over here is our license plate which says Clang, which is using a C instead of a K. I personally think the K works better, but there we are. Anyway, moving all the way up and above, we do have an antenna, we do have an ore detector, so we can go out and about and scout for ore patches. Here's our survival kit, there's the start of our spare wheel. If I put my light on, you can just about make out, I'm not too sure why it's so dark here, Yes, we do have a blaster edge block with a neon tube acting as a gas can. There's the top of our turret, there's the top of our seating area. And around towards the front there, there's some great use of our digital camouflage skin blocks. If we were to move all the way down and underneath it, past that hinge, past our hazard skin, all the way around to here, we see how the bottom has been set up. So this thing is fully connected, so it is all ready to go in survival mode. So we see we've got some cargo containers for our ammunition, we've got a couple of batteries, and a few blaster edge blocks here and there, make sure it is structurally safe if taking a hard landing. Moving towards the bank, there's our connector that goes up to our hinge. Then we've got to come around on the opposite side, which we didn't see, which I believe was this side. There's another seat. Coming a bit closer, there's our ore detector. There's our fake can. As well as behind here, we can just about make out a battery, a large battery. And over to this section, we see the other end of the battery and a way to get inside. It will support the camera all the way through and look behind it, so there is our battery. Over to this side, there is our O2H2 generator. Looking up is our spotlight. Turning towards the front, that's all we can see. So there is our hydrogen engine, and this is basically the view we're going to be getting. So like I said, we are heavily reliant on that camera above us to see where we're going. And over to this section, we've got a programmable block telling us what's going on with toolbar number two. So we just have a bunch of wheel controls, so this is quite handy to know what they're actually doing. And then as for that... That's pretty much it, the outside of the VME Alpha, and this is bloody fantastic how it's all been set up. So now what I can do is just grab hold of my character, come into one of these cockpits, it doesn't matter which one we go into because they're both the same, so hopping into this one, bringing up the HUD, these are the controls we get, so we've got quite a lot to go through, but a lot of them we can't just skip because they are quite simple. Yes, for our first tab, number one is going to be for our camera right above our seats, so we get a good view of what's going on. Number two is for manual control over our auto cannon turret, so we can blast the enemies in the distance, with number three being to turn it on and off. Number four is for our hydrogen engine on and off. Number five for our hydrogen tanks to stockpile on and off. Number six for our batteries to auto or recharge. 
Number 7 is for our spies at the front on the lower halves, turning them on and off like so. You just about made that out. In fact, I will just make it a bit darker up here so we can see what's going on with it. Yes, 7 is for the lights down there. Number 8 is for the lights on the top. And then number 9 is for our parachutes to open and close, just in case we get into a pickle while well, well, falling down. Bring the sunlight back around as best as I can. That will have to do. On to tab number 2. These are all the controls for our wheels. So in first person view, looking across, number 1 is for ant wheels, number 2 and 3 is for our power, 4 and 5 is for our strength, 6 and 7 is for our friction, and then 8 and 9 for our speed limit, which is going to be very useful. We are capped at about 45 meters per second, which is very nice and very safe, so we'll just leave it as it is. Anyway, back in the third person view, tab number 3, we've got our hydrogen engine once again to turn it on and off. We then got some more controls for our batteries to turn them on and off and to auto recharge. Hydrogen tanks, O2 H2 generator, survival kit on and off. We've got an antenna, or detector, and our brake lights at the back, in case we want to hide from any enemies searching for us at night. Then on to tab number 4, we've got our gyroscopes, which is a flip control. So activating this and hopefully I don't break the vehicle. If we do end up getting upside down for whatever reason, we can activate that. And it will just simply flip us and write ourselves to drive away. Number 2 is once again for our battery. 4, 5, 8 and 9 for our front and back hinges to attach and detach. And then number 7 is for our camera so we can reverse this thing up nice and safely. And there we go. There's the controls for the VME. I think it's time to drive this thing around and slowly head towards those space powers and start blasting them. But before I do that, what I will do is come into the turret and change the targeting. So I want to make sure it's targeting the weapons first of all, so it does have a rocket launcher. Yes, undoing the parking brake, not sure why I reactivated it. Driving around, this is what we get. We are a little bit wobbly for whatever reason, but as you can see, we are sort of capping out at about 50 meters per second. We will get a bit of airtime on here because it's not quite flat. And then just doing a tight corner, we will start to tip over, but that just might be because I'm on a wonky surface. Come to a stop, the vehicle does feel like it wants to have the back tip up and flip over. And doing a tight turn. Here we go. That is what we get. So it's very nice. It does want to tip over, but it's just heavy enough not to. If it wants to keep doing this, it will flip over. But luckily, that will never happen in actual gameplay. So one final thing to do, of course, is to drive along towards these space powers and let the turret deal with them, and we'll see how it handles. So coming over this little mound, over towards them, I can probably snipe them from this distance once I get a bit closer, because their active engaging range is about 600 meters. So let's just stop right about there, activate the turret, look over to there, we see their Gatling gun, we can see their rocket launcher, they should have an interior turret below them, and to shoot them, ooh, that's a bit bright on the screen. We can see we can slowly destroy that turret if we wanted to. But I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to drive all the way up to it and let the gun automatically shoot into them. And there we go, it's actually going to do it. I can just sit here and hopefully it'll do its job. It doesn't look like it's going for the turret, which is quite odd. I told you to actually go for the turret first of all. So I can double check to make sure that's saved. Guess it did. Let's go and move all the way around. Hopefully it'll reline and go for that gun. No, it's not. It seems to be very fixated on the middle of the building. So let's go and get a bit closer. The Gatling gun has engaged me. Please switch to the Gatling gun. I don't think it is. I think it is just going to keep pummeling into the main body. Let's just try and interrupt it. And no, it doesn't really want to try and go for me. But there is the rocket turret. There is a bad hit at the back. There goes the rear of the vehicle. There goes the cockpit. And it's still slowly driving away. But that's going to be that for this vehicle. So yes, yeah, so I'm not too sure what, what the... It looks like it just did a shotgun blast of rockets at me. Yes, not too sure what's going on with that. But yes, that is pretty much it for the VME Alpha. It's a lovely land vehicle to use in survival mode. If you want to have something very useful to drive around, make sure you're nice and protected from any kind of pesky drones. Why just going out and scouting locations, scouting for ore patches, and of course looking for base locations. So be a link to the description below if you do wish to download and play around it yourself. Highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video at some point soon. Bye bye.